Hello, welcome to Get Your Mind On. I'm Lori Stos. Well, as we continue thinking about mentoring, last week we talked about really what mentoring is and how to set it up in terms of organizationally or the different types. Today I want to talk about being a mentor and what that means. So when you think about being a mentor, there may be people that you're a mentor to that are, is natural, that you have uh, probably haven't had a formal relationship, but they look up to you. Uh, they come to you and it's maybe an informal mentoring process. And some of you may have a formal mentoring process where you're consistently meeting with people and mentoring individuals. So let's talk about what that looks like and what it is. What it is, is when we think again about developing people, you really have to be interested when you're a mentor to develop people, to be interested in their growth and their potential, and to be interested in giving feedback, helping them grow and learn, and also being a great listener. I think that's really important to think about as well. So when you think about being a mentor, it's uh, obviously those types of things. It's also thinking about time. There's a time factor in being a mentor that you really have to think about. Do you have the time to invest in it? So think about how do we set mentoring up for success? Well, first, it's finding the right person. So if someone asks you to be a mentor to them, I think it's important to have a conversation. First is if that's going to work for you and are you willing to commit? Um, if you're not, I think that's the conversation that needs to be had is uh, what does that look like? So first would be setting expectations. So how often are we getting together? Um, what is that person wanting to accomplish? Um, are we getting together you know, weekly, monthly? What's the method of getting together? Is it telephone? Is it in person? Is it Skype? Obviously it would depend on the, where the person is or where they live. Uh, I think that's important. The next piece would be the content. So what are you going to talk about? Are you here to really help them grow their skills? Is it somebody in the workplace who is maybe vying for uh, eventually wanting to be in your role? Is it someone who is just young and wanting to learn more about organization? Uh, you have to think about those kinds of things too. Is it someone who you're owning a business and someday they want to own their own business? Um, it could be someone who is, uh, it could be a personal mentoring relationship, uh, somebody who's a young mother uh, and uh, you're an uh, experienced parent and they really want to uh, visit with somebody about how do you do this, how do you manage? We were just having a conversation the other day about how do you manage two little kids in the work and everything going on and, and balancing all that and having a mentor to help with that is important. The other thing I think it's important is even in the nonprofit world is helping people to become more involved. There might be people who want to be more involved and have an experience mentoring. The other thing I see a lot is board involvement. We have a lot of young folks who maybe have a desire to be on a board, but they really don't know what it means to be on a board. And I think when you think about board involvement, there's a level of sophistication, there's some etiquette and some do's and don'ts, and we really have to think about how can we help them grow. So that's another mentoring opportunity. So I think content is very important for us to think about in a mentoring relationship. The next piece is knowing the individual. I talked a little bit in the last one about how do you do matching. Um, I think there's the sharing um, or whatever the expectations are of us to listen and to share knowledge, but we really have to think about who is that person and how do they go about their work. What's their role and what's their perspective of the work? And, and I think uh, um, seeing their talent and knowing and understanding their talent, you know, in many organizations we use Strength Finder for this and um, it's a good because it helps people know the perspective they're coming from. So as a mentor, you could get very frustrated with an individual if you give them work to do or homework and they come back and they don't do it or they did it in a different way. That might frustrate you. You have to stop and recognize, and hopefully as a mentor you've been through these experiences, that everybody's different. So we really have to capitalize on their strengths and help them know and understand who they are and how they can accomplish what they need. Now how you can be a great partner to that is because you see it from a different perspective, they're going to rely on you to help them see it in a different way. So I think that's a great thing that a mentor can provide is, is helping them know, okay, you're seeing it this way, how about this? Look at it, look at it in a different way. Um, also, thinking about who their best partners can be. As we know, to be successful, we all need great partners, so helping them think beyond and how they can tap into other people as well. I think that's critically important. The last thing would be really thinking about um, what is the structure 
in terms of are you going to give them work to do and they need to come back. And it goes back to setting expectations a bit. But I think it's important to think about what is the content and how that content's going to go and how long is the mentoring relationship going to last. And finally, I think there's a, a what is this role? Um, again, this role is a mentor, which is an advisor, which is a, a person who can guide them and teach them. I think that's important. I think we have to be careful not to cross the line, though, um, of what a mentor is, um, if, especially if you're working in an organization. I think it might get sometimes a little bit um, uh, you, where we have to be careful that we're not guiding them in a way um, that might get in the way organizationally, that it's a relationship not in the same department maybe, um, just knowing you might be working with some of the same people, that you can guide them um, and influence them to be, uh, you know, uh, positive in how they go about that, but just making sure if we have some organizational issues that we're pretty clear on what that looks like. And I think the final thing too is what it's not is if it gets into some uh, therapy and counseling, I think there's some pieces of life that we need to talk about with our mentor mentees in terms of how is life going on beyond work or whatever the content, how's work going beyond the personal life or whatever it may be. But I think there's a point too that if you're feeling uncomfortable about that, that it may be something if it gets deeper that you refer to a professional uh, because that might the lines might get crossed a little bit. So when we think about mentoring and being a mentor, what an exciting opportunity for a person to pass information off. So I really want you to think about being a mentor and what that looks like. So for positive charge is, one, is what is being a mentor to you? Two, have you had a great mentor? And what have you experienced most from that mentor that you could share with someone? And three, how can you go about teaching others about mentoring? if you have had that experience already. Being a mentor is an important thing. It helps others learn and grow, and we need to pass on that knowledge, and we need to help others grow and that character be built. I hear many older professionals being frustrated with the younger generation, especially saying, oh, they don't have responsibility, or they don't do this, or they don't do that. Well, guess what? That's your opportunity to step up and help them grow and learn and be a mentor. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to get your mind on.